Record. Turn, turn on record. Got John, it. Turn on record. Hey, John, turn on record, would you? I've done it. Now I have to start over. It's Lancaster Woodturner's Coffee Hour number 31. Um, let me see who's here already. Uh, good crowd coming in. I'm going to let them click in for a couple of minutes. So here's Dave Blyle. Um, Barry, you said you had a new video of your jig, uh, spiral jig. Will you be able to show that this morning? Yeah, I got it. Uh, I got it queued up here. You got it queued up here. You want to start with that? Sure, we can do it now. Go for it. Uh, be before we cut to the uh, video, if you want to spotlight me or something. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, I just want to. Uh, the movie is going to be an iMovie and it's made up about six uh, short segments. It's not terribly long. But I wanted to uh, pretty much the only part that you're going to have to make to make this new jig, whereas before you had to do, I got a listing here of the, uh, the drawbacks on the old rig. There was machining required, so you had to have a machinist lathe or access to one. Uh, this requires only a bandsaw. Uh, a table saw is nice, not necessary, but certainly a nice lathe and a drill press, and you can make this jig. Uh, the other one had pretty tight tolerances to make sure the belts weren't too loose or too tight. Uh, this has very loose tolerances. Uh, if you're off by a quarter of an inch, it's not gonna change anything. Uh, and the total cost, I got to say, this, is, this depends on what you have laying around your shop. If you have uh, plywood and such laying around the shop, uh, my out-of-pocket to make this thing was $38. Mm -hmm. uh, all Amazon except for uh, a piece of threaded rod from Home Depot. And the router, yeah? You got to buy the router. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I guess I'm just used to, uh, I do a lot of flat work and I'm used to everybody having a router. Uh, it's actually a little laminate trimmer. And uh, you can buy the one that you'll see in the video for $32 from Harbor Freight. Not the best in the world, but it does the job for this. Uh, and finally, it's, the whole thing is based on one continuous timing belt. There are no belt changes or extra belts or sprockets you have to buy after the original setup. So let me go ahead and share the video with you. Okay. Can you enlarge that on your end, Barry, so we see it bigger? Uh, when I start to play, it'll be it'll be full screen. Okay. Right. Now I'll be pausing it to make short explanations as it goes along. Okay, this is the original design, and as you can see, it has uh, gears and idler pulleys and uh, numerous belts involved. Uh, it does work very well but I can see why nobody would want to adopt it because they'd be putting about a hundred hours of work into making the thing. Um, so it's, and then you see it's operation. Wow. So here's the new design. And uh, if you, <clears throat> at the, we'll see close up later, but at the, at the headstock end there, Use the uh, commercial index wheel so you can get whatever spacing, uh, including I think uh, Ted asked about if he was doing one of his uh, five-sided boxes, you can indeed do five, you know, every 72 degrees uh, on this indexing wheel. That is not included in the cost that I gave you. That is a, an item that I had around the shop here from other earlier indexing work, I think the indexing wheel is somewhere around $32 from a company in Texas. I think it's uh, Iron Fire is the name of the company. One word, Iron Fire. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, and you can see here it's one continuous belt, you can kind of follow the belt all around the circuit. Jeez, that's move. ingenious. <laughs> I got to say, that's ingenious as hell. That's very good. Yeah. 
Okay, let me pause here to, at the, uh, directly under the blue plate, you'll see th these metallic things are all 20 tooth sprockets. And the sprockets are all mounted on, I opted for 5 16 versus quarter inch, just because the, it's a, I didn't, wasn't sure how much deflection you might have under the tension of the belt. And I want to make sure I didn't get any tendency to run off. So this is a, I used the Home Depot 5 16 uh, shaft to uh, put these uh, sprockets in. You could do it without any kind of ball bearings or uh, oil light bushings or anything. But I chose to uh, just because uh, the cost that I gave you included, you can buy 30 ball bearings, right, and, you know, roller bearings for $11 from Amazon. They're Chinese made bearings. Uh, they are all sealed and it's like twice as many as you need for the job. I have double bearings at each location to make sure the, the rod stays straight, the spool stays straight. The Larry, two, question. Go ahead. Uh, you're talking about the bearing that's mounted in the wood? What you're, what you're seeing mounted in the wood, right, at all locations. Uh, in this image here, the one right next to my hand where the belt yeah. pays over and goes down to the tailstock. Yeah. What, there's one directly above, and that has the effect of turning the belt 90 degrees also. Yeah. I mean, you, 90 degrees out of plane. Yeah, did you, you know, say so there's it, two bearings there at each location? I'm sorry? Did you say there are two bearings at each location? Yes, just because these uh, cheap uh, Chinese yeah. bearings are only quarter inch thick, and if you put in just one, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of angular flex. Uh, okay, so you have two bearings and then a five sixteenth rod through there. Yeah, yeah, it's an eight. The bearings are actually eight millimeter, which is like two thousandths of an inch difference than five sixteenth. Uh huh. And so, so there you... was no there was no drilling or reaming or anything required. It's just as received as how all the pulleys are and they pass through all the bearings as received. Mm -hmm. And then I put a, a drop of uh, <clears throat> a drop of CA on the rear end of each shaft so it doesn't allow it to pull back out readily. You'd have to force it out uh -huh. to make sure it stays in its home. So you just drill a hole in the plywood and press a bearing in from each side and use the shaft to align them and then float some CA around them. Is that right? Yeah. In this case, I used a, if you, if you look at the block right in front of my hand, it's actually two pieces of quarter inch uh, Baltic birch plywood with about a three quarter inch thick piece of, in this case, I just happened to have some sassafras scrap laying around. So it's a sandwich. And I, I drilled like a, a one inch diameter hole through the uh, sassafras uh, to give the shaft plenty of clearance. And then I uh, had a little jig on my drill press so that I could drill consistent bearing locations. And I drilled through the four pieces of uh, quarter inch plywood uh, for the, these bearings are, uh, they're technically eight millimeter ID 22 millimeter OD. Uh, I'll confess I did buy a 22 millimeter Forstner bit. I'll be happy to lend it out to anybody. It's only use that I had was for doing this. Uh, but I do have it on hand if anybody would care to go this route versus going with all English dimensions and uh, using a, a three quarter bit or whatever. And hey, Barry, Barry, this is Alan. Uh, what keeps the shaft uh, from lateral? Uh, what, what keeps the shaft connected to the bearings? The shaft goes through both bearings. Right. Uh, then so, you glue it to the back bearing, don't you? To the inside right. Right. After you, go, you put it in place and it, uh, the shaft protrudes on the inside, you can kind of see on the right hand base bearing. The shaft protrudes just by about a, I just made it close and you could have a protruder over for all you want. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. But the, once the shaft is through, I just put a drop of uh, this gap, the super gap filling. Uh, okay. CA. Okay, I got it. 
and it behaves but just like Loctite. Mm -hmm. You know, Barry, it, Barry, this the is shaft is permanently, well, semi-permanently in there. Um, gotcha. The shaft can't move with respect to the inner race of the bearing, and that's fine. So the bearing is engaged throughout the right. rotation. Yep. Barry. And the two uh, the two bearings that, and spot brackets that you see, if you come down directly below the chuck, there's two side by side. Those, it turns out, are superfluous and don't have to be put in there. I thought when we got down to a small, in this case, the belt, the white pulley that you see the belt pass over in front of the index wheel, uh, that pulley is about as small as it can be. It's only a three inch diameter and it has to have clearance at two and a half inch of diameter for the, for the chuck. And so it's like a, um, just like a thin wall um, pulley there. And I was afraid with it only being three inches, the belt might slip on it. And so to give it more envelopment, I was gonna run, I was gonna thread the belt down from the pulley that's above my hands down over the one at the center so we get like 280 degrees of engagement. But it turns out it is not needed. There's no slippage at all. And this is the smallest, the, that particular sprocket, the three inch sprocket produces a helix that uh, measures out to be about 28 degrees of rotation. I'm sorry, 38 degrees of rotation per inch of travel. So if you, if you were making like a 10 inch long or a nine inch long candlestick, say you're the twist will have gone a full 360 around the, the candlestick. Can we see this in action? I'm sorry? Can we see this in action? Yeah. I'm just getting all my words out of the way here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, you can make the pulleys any diameter you want. The next pulley, the one I showed you at the opening and I held up, that's a f uh, four inch and it produces about a 28 degree per inch of rotation. Uh, 28 degree rotation per inch of travel. And as you go bigger and bigger, uh, up to maybe six inches, seven inches, you get down to where you're, it's a very long, shallow helix. Barry, Jim Bowman had a question, I understand. Barry, it seems like uh, you could have bought a handful of those Chinese bearings like I did for my Rikon bandsaw. I discovered they're called skateboard bearings. That's probably why they don't last long on the bear, on the bandsaw, but they're almost the same size that you're mentioning. Then you could have extra ones for your bandsaw as well. <laughs> These are actually sold as skateboard bearings, and you can buy them. You can buy them in a package of ten for like eight dollars, twenty for like nine dollars, thirty for ten dollars and change. So I just went ahead and bought thirty. So if anybody wants to make one of these. I've got about 12 bearings left over. Uh, yeah, and I may, have, I may have overdone it. Probably, probably bushings would have worked just about as well. I don't know. Right, they have a bearings, and so wood dust downstream shouldn't be much of a problem. Hey, Rikon wants 225 a bearing if you buy it from them. You can buy a whole pack from uh, Amazon, like you mentioned, and they fit perfectly and they work great. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the, those uh, those real cheap bearings. I, I know you can you can spend upwards of seven dollars or eight dollars for a bearing, not much bigger than these. Uh, they are better on they don't allow angular deflection. They are a tighter. In some cases, they aren't even a ball; they're a roller, you know, a ground roller. Mm -hmm. But the cost really goes up on them. And, and for these, for less than uh, you know thirty cents a piece, you can't beat them. I don't think. Okay, so here we go. There you're just seeing it. We're, I'm turning that knob there. That is one mode of advancement and the one that I prefer. And then we go to the next video. And this shows, this is something that some of you may have around your shop, some may not. And that's right behind the blue plate. You'll see it's a, a live one inch eight uh, spindle. It's got a Morse taper on its backside that goes into the lathe. And then that thing itself rotates freely. And I, 
if you have a, a, a more expensive lathe than mine, like a robust or whatever, any of those that have a, a, a true readout on variable speed and are not driven by tapered pulleys, your, your spindle is free enough to rotate that you don't need this kind of live center. Mine, because it's constantly engaged with the uh, tapered pulleys, it takes quite a bit of load to rotate it when it's not under power. And so I, I went ahead and bought this uh, PSI, Penn State Industries sells these live uh, spindle pieces for, I think they're, I think I paid $28 for it. But anyhow, that, that permits easy, very easy rotation. And my invisible hand is rotating it down on the knob there. This just shows now that now I have mounted the and that's 12 inch drawer slides. I'm not entirely happy with that. They do allow a little bit of lateral rock, as you can imagine, drawer slides would. <coughs> do you have a way, Barry, that you can lock that in place so that you don't have to hold the, the, the drill and, and turn the knob at the same time? <laughs> or do you have to be pretty ambidextrous to do it? I'm sorry, let me go back to uh, get out of this and go back to... You're coming up on 20 minutes, Barry. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm logging off here. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> okay. okay. What was the What was the last question? You have a, a hand. You have a hand thing to turn the to to do the feed, and then you're handing. So you have to do sort of two hand coordination in order to do the to make the spiral. Right here. Here's the thing. The hand wheel will work no matter which, no matter whether the, if you use a small pulley or a large pulley. Uh, if, you're, if you uh, take your hand off the hand wheel and actually put your one hand on the index wheel and the other hand on the router to move it, um, I have a, a depth stop that I've made for that router so it goes in and hits a depth stop and uh, you just hold it in against that and the slight force of your hand will move your bed, uh, will move the carriage left or right. And depending on the relative ratio, you know, whether you're using a big pulley or a small pulley, the, the dominant side <coughs> transitions from the carriage to the index wheel. And so for, for small pulleys, like I showed you there, <coughs> the index wheel is the most easy way to move everything. <laughs> for for large wheels, uh, the gear ratio, the uh, leverage advantage switches over to you're better off sliding the carriage. But you don't you have do to have do both. Of you were born with it. Uh, you were born with enough hands to operate the thing with you. I just kind of uh, keep my hand on it with my thumb behind it, holding it in against its stop. Or if I put the uh, if, you, if anybody, if any of you saw the last version, I made a nose cone for the router, which if we're doing straight work, I mean, I mean uh, you know, non-tapered non or non-exaggerated non uh, curvature, uh, you can just pull it in tight against the wood and the nose cone on the router controls the depth right there. Hmm. This is this is pretty far above my head. Is there an example of the work that's done on this? Not yet. Uh, I'll have it for next. I just finished this thing. Uh, finished finished yesterday afternoon. Well, you've got the uh, ones you made before. Have you got a sample of what you made with the other jig? Yeah, it'll, it'll, it will copy what I did before, and you're using the index wheel, and that's the key to the whole thing on getting. Well, do you have one of those right there that you could hold up? Troy has never seen it. I'm sorry. Do you have a, a a sample that you could hold up and show us? From, only from the previous. Yeah, mechanism. from the previous. From the previous. 
So those of us who didn't see the previews will know what you're talking about. Okay, hold on. Let me, uh, I'll be back in 10 seconds. Okay. I have a couple of comments on that. Uh, Go for it, Ron. The, that belt layout that he has there is very similar. There's a, a product on the market called Flute Master and Spiral Master. And that's, that's exactly what he did, although he used a bead chain to go around the corner. That belt drive he has there, we use those on V-belts at New Holland. When they turn a corner like that, we call them mule drive. Uh, but uh, that's, that's a simple way to turn a corner in a different direction to get the different rotation. Well, Ron, all the ones I've seen on the marketplace at trade shows have lash and slop in them. Barry's previous version had no slop at all. It was amazing. I was, and I don't believe this one has any slop either. I'm going to put the spotlight back on Barry. Well, yeah, I think Barry, you have uh, on that belt. You have spring tension on that to keep the belt tight. Your you're main muted, drive Barry. belt. Barry, you're muted. Rose. And I'm, I'm going to have to ask you to wrap it up in a few minutes. Oh, okay. You're coming up on half an hour. Okay, quickly here. This was a, a goblet that I did on the, the other one. Not a very functional goblet, I admit, but there you have it, the Holy Grail. It's a very attractive piece, <laughs> and the uniformity of the spirals and the lack of chatter and char is quite amazing. Uh, and this was one where I had a high helix. And you can see right here the old device that, where that little misstep is. If you fail to unlock, if you, if you left the pin in place in the index wheel, it wouldn't rotate. And so you got stuff like this that you had to be very mindful of unpinning the index wheel before you start cranking. But uh, this was just one where I put 12 flutes move all the way around it. Does that answer uh, for you, uh, Troy? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Barry. Uh, the, and then for the candle, candle stick that, with six uh, bands on it. It was, it was nice. pre-drilled all the way through with the one-inch hole. And what was notable about that was he made the cuts in more than one pass and the device indexed right exactly back into the previous cut. Yeah, it replicates, uh, you know, when you when you go left to right versus right to left, uh, just because you're climbing one grain uh, you're on one side and climbing the other grain on the opposite side on the return pass, it does, if you use like say a quarter inch bit, you are gonna get like a, a 30,000, it's like a 0.28 wide slot just because of that climb angle. Uh, but you plan for that. Oh, by the way, on this new jig, uh, it revert. You get reverse direction by instead of securing the belt ends at the operator at the at the front face of the lathe, you thread the belt so that you move those clamps to the rear of the carriage, and then when the carriage is going toward the the headstock, the belt is turning the head in the opposite direction, and so you're getting you can get forward and reverse spiral just by which edge of your carriage you attach the belt to. All right. Uh, Barry, is that, uh, is that a flat belt that you used? Yes, it's, it's so, if you go on Amazon and put in GT, like, like a car, you know, GT2. Yeah, that's, that's a tooth belt. Uh, right. Commonly it's used on printer. 3D printers. Right, yeah. that's what they're made for. It's a printer belt, you, yeah. You buy, a, you buy a five meter, you know, you buy about a 16 foot long rolled up belt of it for $9. And that, that'll that make your continuous big belt and uh, the surface for all of your uh, wheels. It, it's enough to make everything. And, and that, does, uh, using a tooth uh, wheel on the crank, uh, eliminates a lot of uh, slippage. Yeah, no slippage. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, if you were, if you had a heavy load, turning that hand crank 
without assisting the travel at all, you might, it might skip a tooth, it might jump. The, the nice thing is when it jumps, neither the carriage is advancing nor is the head rotating. And so you don't get damage to your project by having it jump a tooth or ta five teeth or 10 teeth. It's just annoying to have it shatter instead of working smoothly. And it can be overcome by a small redesign so you get a more complete envelopment of uh, that little sprocket down there only has about five teeth engaged with the belt. But if you make it a bit more serpentine, you can get 180 or, or 240 degrees of engagement and then you'll have no slippage at all. Yeah, there are, uh, there are uh, 3D uh, CNC uh, devices. Uh, you can look for MPCNC and or low rider CNC uh, to give you good examples of how to set those uh, up with uh, the bearings and belts. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation, Barry. That was fascinating. It was very good. Thank you. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah. You're, Thank you're you, welcome. Barry. I'd be happy to entertain anybody's uh, questions on uh, by email. Yeah, and I'll get this will be posted so you can see the video again, and we'll get a better video in there too of how this how the new thing works. Um, okay, Randy, since you were just talking, why don't you, Randy, why don't you carry on and give us your troop, your, uh, your announcement? Uh, the uh, Wood Turners, uh, the uh, Woodcraft store in Harrisburg is sponsoring a turn for the troops uh, on the 7th and 8th, the Saturday and Sunday this coming. And uh, all uh, materials will be supplied. Uh, they'll have blanks, they'll have kits there. The blanks will be pre-tubed, so all you have to do is turn them. Uh, they'll be open from open to close. Uh, you must wear a mask, and of course, a dust mask is a good idea because uh, we will be turning and sanding. Um, uh, but everybody's invited. Uh, people are needed to do uh, to work as mentors. We will have uh, first-time turners coming out to uh, to turn pens. And so the pens that are created uh, will be sent to the troops serving our country overseas. And so it's a great way to remind them that they are not forgotten. Okay. Uh, I'm going to next show you a video that Doug and I made uh, with Bob Gochnauer. And I'm going to show it first from my own screen at a much lower res than we've shown videos before. We've had a lot of trouble getting with latency with videos down this channel, but there's no Zumba going on in my living room. So I have the whole Wi-Fi to myself. Um, and this is a lower res version of the video. We'll be posting a higher res on YouTube later today. Um, and let's see how this works. And if this doesn't work, let me know. And then I'll, cause I have it also set up to try it from YouTube to see if that works any better, but this is from my own computer. So let's give it a go. This is about a 10 minute video. And here you have, uh, Gawker. Read the sign here, Bob Gawkinow. Go for it, Bob. Show us, show us your bench. You got to, you got to use your bench. We got some ornaments here. You, you got a snowman and a tree, and then uh, pictures here. That is an excellent piece. Uh, guy from Canada made that. I seen that at a symposium. Frank Sudol. Yeah, he died. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Yeah. Who's is this? This is Bob? This is what I use, yeah. Yeah, come on, you know, I have to pick one way. Yeah, you can go back. What is the DBR or what? I don't know what number it is. But it's an oval. Still have a DBR, yeah. Uh, that's a Spalded Beach. Art brought that out to me just the other day. He bringing me some tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. What, what do you want? What do you want? That stuff. That stuff is like turning stone. Oh, is it? <laughs> it is hard. I yeah. mean, I'm back here all morning. And, uh, what we uh, up here? You're not stalling, are you? No, I'm all. 
it's a thing they do not put on the call. No. But uh, I, it's got to be a water room. Is that more of your wood stash back here? Yeah, I can get a quarter. Okay. Uh, the, the block there, that's for trees. I make trees. I'll show you some trees. It's a uh, cut up beach, most of them. And then that block, uh, the other there is cherry. The guy wants me to make a round ball. Now I turn about three hours in the morning. You find other things to do. Yeah. Watch television. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. used to host a lot of people from uh, wood printing sessions in your shop. Because remember, we used to do it for Susquehanna yeah. and for Langley. Oh, yeah. Who is your most memorable guest? Oh, yeah. Ellsworth. Well, he stayed in my place two nights. Well, yeah. yeah. <coughs> that was exciting. Yeah. Did you learn a lot from him with the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Just down below. There. Bob has his bins down got here. Some, some uh, blood wood here. Somebody gave this to me. I forgot to do it. Flooring. Blood wood flooring. Oh, yeah. Here, I got a very long. Cool. It's hard to get red blood cord anymore. Yeah. And this is just more off cuts. This is that I that's holly. Oh yeah. Well, <clears throat> in case I need it someday. Is that your blackwood down there too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, is this your little jet lathe too? That's mine. Yeah, I brought yeah. that. Okay. What do you got here? That's my tool. Okay. And if I don't throw any wood away, stick it in here, and I might need it someday. Come on. I think I've got some down here. So did you bring some of that wood with you from your shop? Probably some. Not too much, I don't think. i got to show you his safety glove here. See? Now, now if they do last a while... Yeah, I, I probably have that 15 or 20 years at least. <laughs> But it's fingerless, which is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. Is that the one that's got the You're reinforcement? Huh? That, no, that doesn't have the reinforcement. You cut the end off. Yeah. yeah. That's leather, so you know. Yeah, that's what I do. When they, when they wear a little bit, I cut them off. <clears throat> but you can tell them right away. <laughs> yeah. Are you tell people to turn left and look for yep. the bulls? Hi. How are you? Found each other, huh? Oh, yeah. Hackberry tree. And I, I use all kinds of wood. I used to keep my scrap wood and make trees. I sell them all year round. So then you turn it that, yeah. and then you can put it together like. One more time. One more. There you go. Oh, so a tree. So then you got a tree. That's a, no, I said snowman, it's a tree. I don't even know what the heck it is. But it's un, it's almost unbelievable what you got to turn yeah. Yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't turn any for a while. And then here, no over a month ago, I started, I decided to turn one. I put the trunk on the top. Well, so I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this is my glued up. Is that Paduke in the middle of that ridge? No, that, no that's a... Uh, that's a... Uh, Bloodwood. Bloodwood, yeah. Okay. But I have some Paduke, it's almost that like color. It might be a little... So it's maple, color. walnut, and Bloodwood, is it? Yeah. And, uh, holly. Oh, okay. Right, so is there any maple in there, or is it just holly? I, mean, yeah, I think holly. it's all... I think it's all holly. Holly, yeah. holly, walnut, and Bloodwood. Okay. Cool. I get the stuff every place. So do you have a favorite piece? No? We have our herbs up top there. Yeah. Up there. They're ready to go. Well, what would you say was... I'm ready to go. You say that the, the hats were the most difficult piece to... Oh, well, yeah. the main part is to fit somebody to stick your head. Oh, I see. That's the heart. 
this was one of one step by one. She is she is so worried about you know, I, I haven't gone out to anything because I see, and now the numbers are changing again, and it's like, you know, we want to see our kids, and we barely see them, but, you know, my daughter's not feeling well, this is your good one. Good boy. This is this, this is my boy. This is that's your good hat. Wow. This is my name. John. That's a second. Yeah. Oh yeah. And the treatments, you know, I'm not sure what they're going to do with the treatments. You can make small stuff also. <laughs> that's like the little hat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what are these over here? That they're uh, walnut. What do you call that? They're, they come from the tree came f from Europe, or the seed somewhere near Russia, and they were in in Lancaster. Martin Some cut of it down. Those things are from demonstrators. And he that were took me and run out there. And Carpathian he walnut, walnut, he called it. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I just call it plain walnut. Yeah. It's a it's too it's a lot of sapwood. Got so much sapwood. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful work. Oh wow! Wow! Oh, holy cow! Okay. I still bake cookies. Yeah, cool. I mean, I yeah, sell I unbelievable amount every year. I, I don't even go to the pool. I how, a little store. How long does it take you to make one of those? Not too long. Well, all, yeah, all like ten, no sand. Ten well, minutes. Yeah, you almost have to hold. Well, Fifteen minutes. Yeah. 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 It depends. Well, you can see why you, people like them, yeah. Uh, Stegman Turner Symposium yeah. and Kurt Thibault brought in his, his little... Uh, Some of these things little, came from demonstrators that have been in the shop. It was 250 uh -huh. pieces. Yeah. Oh, so that isn't all this stuff. <laughs> that was a nice collection though. Yeah. The other thing I like, Alan Lacey. Yeah, I keep stacking them up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do the same. I was going into a demo with him and he has a block on the lady. He's making a talk about half the size of that. These are our little birdhouses. Earrings. Earrings. Yeah. Oh, very cute. It comes up pretty good. Good stuff. Mice. We got uh, we got some uh, birdhouses. Thank God your hobby is puzzled. Yeah. yeah. See. Everything nice stuff. and anything. Even for the ladies to put on our sweater. Yeah, sweater pins. Yeah. 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 Angels. Little angels. Yeah. Cool. Very cute. Very cool. Well, anyway, that's about it. There ends. I call it a garden hat. Well, what did you turn that on? That's uh, maple. Does she ever wear it? And she can wear it. I love that. Bobby can't get out of the picture. So you got to have your hats together. How long have you been married now? I don't know. 62. Six and a half hard questions, Doug. 63. <laughs> and still smiling is all I can say. February will be another one. Wow. Wow. That's a great hat. Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of stuff. A lot of years. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of fun, too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was great. It was good to see Marion again. Yep. Yeah, we enjoyed making that, too. That was fun. Uh, we got another one uh, with Ron that's 20 minutes, so we'll show you next week or, or soon, anyhow. Uh, any other comments on that or questions for Bob? Many thanks. I'm curious, uh, the, the, the hats with the curved brims, how in the world do you do that? Well, you, you're going to use uh, green wood to start okay. with. And, okay. Uh, you froze. No, I'm afraid you're frozen. You put it in a jig and your hands around shape before it dries. Okay. It, it's not too easy. 
does the D does the curve of the rim happen because you make the flatten in the side, Bob? Correct. So it naturally curves? Yeah, that helps. Okay. Yeah, a hat happens to be a shape that comes naturally out of the tree for some crazy reason. And as, as you can see, the bowls, uh, I make uh, all natural edge. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, the you know, the bark goes off, but I, I've been pretty good at keeping it on. That way, uh, I turn it the shape I want and let it set and let it do its thing. Because it, if it wants to move, why well, uh, it's going to move either way, and you won't see it, you know, with the natural edge. Dave, you had a question. Yeah, I was just going to comment that uh, when we had Jimmy Clues in, uh, he made a small hat, and to get the uh, brim to uh, curve, uh, he just put a, a light rubber band around it. Uh, I, I guess that technique doesn't give you uh, a good enough idea what it, what's going to turn out. Okay. Anybody else? Questions for Bob? And if not, I'll move along. Um, I think it's Ernie's birthday. Is that right, Ernie? Me or them? You're muted. I made a comment about Jimmy Clue's hat that he made. Was that a and Jimmy Clue's hat? And I ended up winning the auction, so there it is. Yep. <laughs> Very good. I'm unmuted. Uh, yes, I was 75 uh, Saturday before last. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Kai. Kai, you were going to show us uh, your, uh, your sounding talk. Are you ready to go on that? Yes, we can try, but um, our internet connection at home broke down and I, I'm at my mother-in-law's at the moment and using her Wi-Fi and that's quite slow. So we can give it a go. If it doesn't work, we can try again next week. Is that okay yeah, that's with you? Fine. So you want to just wait till next week? That's okay with me too, whichever you'd like to do. Okay, then let's wait till next week and okay. I hope our internet is back then and then I'll have a good connection. Okay. Well, thanks for offering Okay, Doug. Yeah, you want to do a little of the, uh, find out what people are making, like we've done before. Sure. Well, I'm going to put a few people on the spot that I haven't shown up for a while. I haven't seen you in a while, Larry Sherman. How's it going? Apartments.com puts more renters in new homes. It's going fine. I've been really involved in a. Uh, we had a gigantic tree fall in our house, and. Um, Getting that back together has been my major activity in the past couple months. So we've got roofers and carpenters and insulation people banging away right now. So, well, did you get any good wood out of it? Actually, no. You know, when I saw that tree and uh, the tree service said they could get it out of here the next day, I said, "Get that thing out of here." It, it was oak, and, and I, you know, I don't, I don't love that for turning, and. Um, it was just, it was huge. It did damage from one end of the house to the other. So that's been my, uh, haven't been doing much turning as a result, unfortunately. Oh, when will I come back again soon, I hope? Excuse me? You're going to be back at it soon then? Yes. In time for Christmas? Yes, this week. Cool. This week, cool. I'm, I'm going to start turning again. How about you, Jack Cap? I haven't heard any... You, uh, we've seen your uh, face on the video quite a bit, but uh, what are you what are you doing these days? My son took us down to uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and we went to see uh, Dick Singh, and he makes uh, birdhouses, and they're made uh, about seven or eight different species of wood, and I've made uh, about thirty of them. Lift that up a little more so we can see it, and I'm going to oh, make wow. a spotlight. Wow. Very cool. 30. Yeah. You've been making those yourself or are those stick things? Those are yours. No, these are these I made myself. I started back in March when everything was shut down and I've, I really enjoyed doing that and some other things. I I turn mostly small stuff. Jack, I, can you hold one of those up again I, and hold it closer to your face so I can see the whole thing? I didn't see it quite. There you go. That's cool. That's cool. Well done. 
Very nice. You got to, he puts a, uh, the whole, the whole top shaft gets drilled out and put an eighth inch dial rod in to make them strong. Uh, they, they really don't break. He had one on display down there and he had ebony in it, but it was, uh, he had a price tag of 275. Wow. I hey, Judy. Any of you ever seen it or not? He, he has some books out. Uh, How many of those did you buy, Jack? Now, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> Judy Stone, you were going to share something last week, but you said you weren't ready. Have you got anything this week for us? Uh, I have a guest who has some things, and I'll show you mine next week. I only found the pictures uh, earlier today. So, okay. But I'll put our guest on. Mark, Mark's yep. been teaching her turning this week. So okay. So she's coming to your camera? Because I've got yeah, you on the spot. On Mark's. She's going on Mark's. Okay, I'll get back to Mark. Hang on a second here. Gallery view and I really like those birdhouses and everything else. It's nice seeing you guys again. Yeah. There's Mark and his guest. Cool. Introduce your guest, please, Mark. What's her name? This is Rima, who, who's visiting, uh, who's who's from India and now here for some some time, and uh, out visiting us. And you're teaching her wood turning. Yep. You're muted, Mark. Yes, Mark is, te Mark is teaching her wood turning. Uh, Hold it up. I've, I've been too busy with other things. Hold it up. Hold it. Yeah. And show that. Wow. Very she nice. Did a very very oh, thin good. wall. Looks like you did a lot of wood turning in India to practice for that. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first time ever, and it was really fun. I've, I've never done wood carving or anything like that. I made another bowl. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Both from our cherry. So I'll show you things next week, Doug. I'll send, okay. I'll send uh, uh, John no the problem. pictures. Okay. Who else have we got here on the list here that we can pick on? Um... Uh, well, I picked on Troy last week. Uh, uh, I've been trying to sort of spread it out. Jim Bowman, you showed us your shop last time. Have you been doing any turning as opposed to just rebuilding your shop? Uh, I have done turning, but not. Uh, what I'm, I'm going to show you something. So can I be redeemed by showing you something? I. Yeah, I think you put your hand back on the on the. Not take yourself off mute again. Yeah, you're muted again. There you go. Yeah, uh, let me share the screen because I actually have the pictures ready. Um, uh, this is um, I don't even know the tree. Uh, the tree. Uh, this is a tree that came down in my son's lawn down in <laughs> Salem, North Carolina. I, the, the city, as they do, cut up to the edge of the road, but left the stump and the roots and everything there. So I spent a Thanksgiving helping him cut up the roots. And I said, Tim, I want to take some of those roots back and see how they turn. I never turned roots before. Well, you can see, I think it was pretty lovely. It had a lot of dozy spots. Matter of fact, the first one I did I about lost uh, half of my uh, jaw and teeth because it, it was dozy and broke away and I had forgotten to drop my shield and hit me right on the side of the face, but did not lose any teeth and was wiser afterwards. Um, let me show you another view of it. Uh, one of my things is I love to turn these little flat, uh, kind of like uh, four cornered square platters and then glue them on the bottom as a foot. Um, so here you see it. And I also, I know some of you guys do this, uh, instead of buying brass, uh, brass chippings or whatever commercial, I just go to the hardware store and say, give me a uh, stuff out of your key grinding machine and uh, embed it in uh, CA glue. And so that's the little feature added to it. So that's a root bowl, which now sits on my son's table at home, so. 
That's is there that any was, chance that is there any chance that's Oakville, um, Jim? It could well be. Uh, I really don't know. They they live in a very treed area, and I'm not real expert, particularly when the most of the tree was gone by the time I got there. And obviously, I'm not good with the roots thing. So it, it just uh, reminds me of a piece of pin oak I turned off of my own life a while ago. Could could well be that. I like the figure of it. I don't care what its name was, but uh, yeah. So for most of the fruit I've seen, you really get some fantastic grain in it. Yeah, I yeah. I, I have become hooked. I've become hooked on uh, on uh, roots now. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's a little weird to grab them and turn them and stuff because they they're odd shaped, but that's the fun of it. So that's what I've been doing. Well, the roots are under a lot of stress, so they get twisty grain. And and the other thing I learned is uh, they can have a buried stone right in the crevice that you thought was clean until your chisel hits it, and boom, you're back to the grinding machine. So in there, done that. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. Hey, John Kelsey, have you been doing anything other than uh, any wood turning as opposed to just taking pictures of wood turning? <laughs> what I did, yeah. Took me two afternoons this week to make a new uh, center post between two double doors that opened to the outside from my shop. The, the, the old people who lived here before me, uh, I think, you know, went down a couple of times and their sons had to kick that door in. So it was all the smashy up. So I had some cypress from another project. So I made a new door post with a, And since I don't keep a router or a table saw, I mean, I have a router, but I hate the things. I make things with rebates in their cross section by gluing up strips of wood. So I mill up the wood to the dimension I want, and then I glue it together to get something that has some sh the shape I needed, which was like a post with rebates on both sides and then latches. And I also have begun taking apart the cast iron uh, lawn furniture that's been sitting around the yard and rotting for years because I don't get it in in the fall. I've got still got some more of this cypress and um, I painted the cast iron blue on one of them and made uh, new slats for the bench. And I got two, three more to bring in and do in the next few days. So that's what I'm doing. There's no turning in it though. It's just a whole lot of milling and a uh, little bit of shaping. Cool. Dave Bryle, I see you sitting there. Am I right? Yeah. Have you been, I, I saw your presentation that, and so show us the group here, what you've been turning recently. Oh my. Many, many, many things playing around here. Uh, uh, here's, uh, I'll start with the acorns. You're going to hold them up or share them? I forgot to share a screen. Just a minute here. Oh, you're going to share a screen. Okay. I'll take this. Yeah, let me off go you. back in a moment and share a screen. Okay. There you should be seeing the acorns. Is that right? Yeah. The, uh, acorns, uh, the acorns, the two on the left side and one, the one in front, uh, uh, they're made of sapile. You can see the nice grain and the top of the textured uh, piece sticking out there. The one in the back is made of uh, walnut. And uh, I started making these like uh, maybe late 70s, early 80s. Uh, the, the max diameter on the lid is around three inches. Uh, and then I, I make the rest of it, uh, you know, according to the rest of the shape. Now, Gabe, I got to say, when I first saw these, I thought that they were, you know, badly rendered because they're so blocky. But last night you explained you turn them straight the way you do so they'll stand up. And, and that made them look very clever to me instead of blocky. Cool. Yeah, and and uh, people that, like I said, Mike Freitag and some other people did make some and they made them more of the shape of uh, a, a true acorn and then they couldn't get it to stand up. So, uh they stand up real nicely, as you can see there, and you can put stuff in. And I don't know how, I think every relative I have has, has one of them. I'm going to try and show the oil. The same was the. Oh, there. oh, there you go. Uh, there's a, yeah, uh, that's the first oil can I made. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, with the one inch hole, uh, you can't put much in it. Uh, so it wasn't that functional. So then I started making them in four pieces, the plate on the bottom. Uh, the bowl, the section in between, and then the uh, uh, the finial. Oh, there you go. Okay, so now that's made in four pieces. The plate on the bottom, uh, the bowl, the connector in between, and then the spout. 
And somebody asked about the spout being hollow. It's not hollow, but uh, from your tailstock, uh, putting a small hole in the very top of it, it gives the appearance, the illusion that uh, it's hollow, but it is not. So worked out pretty well. Okay, so anybody who didn't, uh, wasn't at the Lancaster meeting last night, you can go on our website this after, later today and you'll be able to see Dave's presentation which in which he ran through the making of those and a number of other very clever <laughs> boxes. And I'm going to send you a new version of that that has a little more detail for people that uh, like young, young Turners or maybe Jan Janelle's uh, uh, kids up at Hershey, uh, they have more explanation. So I'll get that to you later on today. Okay, and I'll cool. post that as a PDF. Thank uh, you very much. It's on 11 o'clock, but I see, uh, has anybody else got something they're dying to show before we click off? Here's my place, peace. Okay, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna spotlight you, Roy. I had some pieces of box elder that uh, one of the members here at the wood shop passed away and had these two hunks. So I had fun putting that together. That's cool. Uh, and then had just some scraps that I glued together to finish the little bowl. Show us the bottom oh. of both of them, please. Nice. Nice. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Anybody else before we wrap it up for the day? And on that note, then we will uh, see you all next Thursday morning, I hope, and uh, bring your friends for Wood Turner's, uh, Lancaster Wood Turner's Coffee Hour. Thank, Thank you once again. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you Thanks all. for doing Bye. it, guys. Yep. So long. Thank you. Thanks, John. Lots of fun, this one. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.